While there are many different traditions of the Hindu religion, there are basically three main gods. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, Shiva, the destroyer. This is a trinity of sorts. Aside from these, there are thousands of incarnations of other various gods. Some have wives and lovers, a bit like in Greek mythology. Their idols are often depicted with certain characteristics. Shiva is often seen dancing. Ganesh, the son of Shiva, is the lord of success and education, and usually has an elephant's head. While Hindus sometimes try to harmonize all of this with other religions, it certainly flies in the face of Judeo-Christian scripture. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 1, we read, Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven, above, or on earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. between Christianity and Hinduism is that you believe in reincarnation, right. yes. whereas in Christianity we believe in resurrection, only, resurrection. One, only yeah. one time. One right. time, yes. Right. And after that comes judgment. Right. No more reincarnation. No you only more. have one opportunity to get it right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how do you look at Jesus Christ, who 
the Bible says, went to the cross and shed his blood for our sins. Do you, do you believe in blood redemption as in, as in Christianity, that God sent his son to save us from sin? Thanks for talking okay. to us. There is no blood redemption, you know, we don't hear anything in the Hindu mythology, but... The person who thinks he can serve Hindu gods and the God of the Bible is fooling himself. This is a very toxic form of deception, which requires a redefinition of Christ and biblical theology. Apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, wrote, Flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. You judge what I say. Is not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body, we all partake of the one bread. Then he goes on to say, I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to become sharers with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Then writing to the Galatians, he says, I am amazed that you're so quickly deserting him who calls you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again, now if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you have received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I were striving to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ.